son of Babu Wenceslao entitled Asa Namo. For those who don't know Visaya, it means where are you? So we are here at Mga Gallery in the suburb of uh, Dumaguete City in the municipality of Valencia. And the uh, Mugna Gallery is a very recently opened gallery. It started, I think, in April only. And it has had three exhibitions so far. And this exhibition is a solo show of uh, a very well-known visual artist, singer, songwriter, and uh, sports guy, sportsman, Babu. We are uh, going to visit his show that consists of at least 24 artworks. A very wide selection of uh, artworks that uh, span at least a decade of practice. Here in the ground floor are the more recent works. The most recent being these three paintings that are made of fiberglass and polymer. Maybe we can connect the close, give a close up to this. So as we walk through, we will make, we will definitely see indications of location. So this these new works are called uh, are have a, have dialects that play with words. This one is politics, polyquid. And lastly, policy. Babu is uh, very good with words because he is a wonderful writer, uh, like his mom, his mom. And uh, here in the ground floor, we have an installation of a mixed media piece made of glazed and bare stoneware. It has been mixed with uh, these packets of sand and PVC, PET bottles, PET bottles of uh, sand as well, which were used in his performance during the opening of the show, which you will also see later as our information. Titled is Tambay. Interestingly, this insulation piece goes with a video of the studio that he was working in in Tasmania, Australia. This is wonderful because it gives us an idea of the long process of working with ceramics. Ako may pagkain nito. <laughs> Pero hindi lang lechon. Bukang kakaiba. Tatanungin natin si Babu Mamaya. Ano yung kinakaiba? And then in this video also, we get to see the other artists that he was working with. Uh, some of them were Filipino. Or Filipino. Wow, my wine did. Sarap naman. So it looks like in the kiln, it is not only the works of Babu, but the works of other artists. Yeah, we can see one piece that's part of the installation today. So this is a wonderful part of the exhibition where we get to know more about the process and not we're not just looking at the art. Okay. Another very interesting piece is this, Bolgi. Also made at the same time, 2019. Notice again, the location. Okay. And then we will see later on that this uh, heart uh, 
surrounded by thorns, repeats itself in another piece. The title Volkit refers to the word in the, in the work, vulcanizing. Madalas itong makita natin, di ba, sa mga daanan, sa highway. Uh, but interestingly, dinagdagan niya yung tire, yung, he added to the tire remnants of what could be pieces of coral. You will notice that there are lots of uh, images that reflect the sea. There are fishes, there are um, also sand. And this is really to show that uh, Babu is an artist who's interested in the landscape, both uh, in the mountains and also deep down under. So let's come and go and visit what's downstairs in the basement of Mugna. Hello. Hello. Here's another artist from the Maguete. <laughs> Coming to visit the show. Go. So there are three pieces in this uh, exhibition. One is called Sisi. It's an installation. No? At ito yung sinabi ko na makikita natin ulit ang uh, flaming heart with the thorns. Another imagery of uh, the fish. And the lechon baboy with a bit of sand on the floor. But this video is particularly interesting because it shows us the location or perhaps the features of what looks like to be an island but I'm sure some of you will know that this is an island in a particular place that is disputed. Yeah. We will ask the artist later on to talk more about this okay. Saan yung location? So we see that also here in a series of watercolor drawings. The series is called Meditations on Locations. And then again, location is very clear on every drawing. We can see plants, uh, even locals, no? A diver, uh, siguro a habal habal driver, and then yung mga pagkain na madalas nating makita kainin. Anong tawag dito? Puso. Puso. Thank you. <laughs> Anong tawag dito? Nakasunat. Budbud, kabog. Ayan. Nagugutom na ba kayo? Punta na lang kayo dito para kainin talaga, diba? And then, kakaiba. This one was separated from the pieces. And this could be perhaps one of the earlier works that refer to the video, which also shows the same flower. space because uh, apart from the ground floor, the basement, which is good for video work, they also have a loft where we can also see certain pieces if the space is needed for other works. And here we see the oldest work that is part in this exhibition which dates back from 2013. In these two works, 
Bamboo uses reclaimed wood, LED lights, acrylic, and glass. Another element that, that we can see recurs in his work is light. So now we've seen talaga the the variety of materials that he uses, no? From ceramic, stoneware, to your usual paper. And then of course here we also have a painting, oil, or acrylic on canvas. Sorry. And then lastly, here we have a piece that comes from was made in 2017 and by the Haban And uh, it is a medium that is used a lot by artists in the Visayas, Terracotta. This is different from the pieces we saw as we entered the gallery that are made out of stone there. So let me take you back to the ground floor before we finish our tour. These pieces are actually not made out of ceramic. I would think that they are made out of uh, fiberglass, just like the most recent paintings made out of fiberglass. And then we see also the element of light and also electronics. It looks like uh, Babu loves to tinker with, uh, with, with motors. And so, my question is, saan dito? Where is that uh, visual trope he works with a lot, location? And I was asking one person, maybe because location, GPS location, is designated by letters and numbers. Perhaps we should look for numbers. And where are the numbers here? So we, I know. Cooking since 1972. And for me, I think 1972, that's a very important year in art history as Filipinos. I'm sure you know what, hap what was happening then. And in my head, siguro, hindi na natin kailangan pag-usapan ng location in terms of place. But perhaps, location in terms of an era or a moment in history that brings us back to what happened then. Thank you for visiting this exhibition of Babu Wenceslao entitled Asanamo.
Babu, congratulations huh, for the opening of your show. And uh, I think it's time to hear from our guests. There are actually quite a few questions that have been uh, sent in. So Babu, first question I'd like to know, and our guests would like to know, uh, the theme in most of your artworks are coordinates uh, to locations of the subjects you you paint and you exhibit. When was the first time that you started putting location and why on your artworks? Um, there was this, I started doing that a couple of years ago because of a project which I did for PNOC. We did like a trail mapping survey for, uh, for, uh, for Mount Pelinis. And um, on that on that survey, we we did like you know we documented uh, flora and fauna that we could find along the way along the trail and on the on the camp within the camping spots. And uh, you know, with technology now, there's a geolocation. You can actually it automatically records the exact uh, GPS coordinate of your pictures and you know i mean just as a thought also you know uh, i wanted to sort of you know like do that with art you know like geolocate uh, a specific image also and put the coordinates of where that image was taken as a way of um, you know giving significance to location where the image, uh, where the image actually uh, came from, where it's derived, uh, you know, to me, it's a way of giving more meaning, I, I think, to location because location, in in any way, environment plays, I think, a very important role in in in, in everything. You know, it it shapes us, it shapes our consciousness. Uh, it dictates uh, a lot of things, you know. Uh, so I wanted to sort of um, really incorporate that in in the entire, you know, in the entire artwork, in the entire, you know, uh, visual creative process. 
So you mentioned giving meaning to location, but perhaps by putting a location, you give meaning to the images. I'm just thinking of all of the images that have been exchanged over you know, the web in the past two years during the yes. pandemic. Everything is on screen, but we don't really, I mean, how, how real is our relationship to location? Yes. Is perhaps why your works are, um, shall we say, uh, significant because without location the images could just be random yes i think that that i think that that in a way it's um when i put the gps coordinates i, I it's it's really a very direct reaffirmation of of where the image comes from i think location is is as important as the image because, um, well, location is the host of the image. It's where the image was synthesized. That's interesting. And hence and the title at of the same show. time, location can be the image itself. Yes, yes. Hence the title of your show, Asa Namo. And for those non visayan speakers here, that means where are you? No? Are you? And you use the word host and uh, that the title has a subtitle, which is the GPS to Mugna Gallery. Yes. So um, I think it's uh, just timely that uh, Mugna hosts you, your work. Correct. I think it's also wonderful that um, as a local, you are hosted by a local gallery. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful, no? So. All the more important to the title of your show. Yes, I think because because it what 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 I want to do is really give more meaning. You know, it has to be meaningful. I mean, space and image they go together. You they're 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 tied up together. You cannot take them apart. You know, and and uh, to me, putting the coordinate on the artwork just reinforces that that relationship. And I think we have to, in this time and age, you know, I mean, there are so many beautiful photos and art is really just reiteration. It can be, you know, of, 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 of images. But I think if you really put it down with where that image was actually taken, then it becomes a reiteration of that image in that specific locality, which I think is also important. So the connection of image to space to locality or location. location how about another theme that we see in this exhibition could you talk about the subject because some of your artworks are particularly um, related to history to perhaps also social political history could you talk about how that enters into your creative process um there are pieces there which uh, we did in, in uh, which we did in Tasmania, in Australia, uh, and um, I actually incorporated some coordinates of uh, the islands, the disputed islands, uh, you know, a very controversial uh, political topic that we have right now, and. And to me, location plays a very important role there because, in a way, um, it it's 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 a way for 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 art, you know, for for my art, for, for you know, to, to claim location, you know, to in a way to, to to make it our own. I mean, that is the whole idea of putting the image and its location. It it's actually a a, a way of claiming. Uh, Territory, you know, or or it or you know, like space in general, local space that it is ours, and it is ours to to you know to create a, a relationship with uh, to do as as we would be free to do anything with it. Okay, you use the word to claim 
claim location, spaces? How about issues? Are your artworks direct? Uh, are, are they a direct discussion with critical issues in the country? Yeah, I, I try to, I try to, I think, I think there should be, art should be uh, involved, you know, in, in uh, tackling, you know, social, political issues. I think they should, it should be a very important uh, forum also for that. And uh, I would like to participate in that with my art too. And uh, I think it's, a, it's, a, it can be a platform for, uh, saying things differently other than you know like doing an essay or, or doing a blog you know i mean an artwork can be a different way of looking at the, it can can be a different way of, of presenting a statement mm -hmm. tackling an issue yes and, and uh that's precisely what i try to do with my art too mm -hmm. and, uh you know with with um uh, with my my way of Incorporating locations uh, or geographic coordinates in my artwork. It's it's in a way like a reference to that, to, mm -hmm. that space, yeah. to, to, the, to that specific area that we can claim as our own too. Yeah. It is also part of our heritage, culturally, politically. Yeah. You also do that in your songwriting. Um, I understand that. Uh, Asa Namo is also the title of, of a song that you wrote. And I reviewed the lyrics. You call out certain characters, people. Can you talk to us, talk to us a little bit about who these people are? There was Filimon, there was Maria. Is this particularly calling out to people to ask them where they are? And what their yeah. position is? Um, in that song, Asanamo, yeah, it's it's really a it's it's calling out the the Visaya, you know. I mean, I've I've actually uh, included several uh, popular Visaya names mm -hmm. like Simon. They're they're actually folk names, uh, part of folk culture, Visayan folk culture, and. Uh, uh, they're all included in the in the songs, you know. There's uh, I think there's Philemon, there's Kulas, there's uh, Pedro. And these are these are names actually that have been reiterated in Cyan folk culture. And you know that song actually looks is is in, in a way if you look at the if you read the lyrics, it's a way of looking for that you know uh, for the Visayan for the Bisaya. You know, okay. Where they are now, and I think that's. I, w I just would like to, you know, again, uh, bring that again into the conversation, into the contemporary realm of, of the, you know, that the Bisaya should not should should, you know, should always be there, I and mean, we should not forget our roots. That's interesting because your practice then becomes a way of looking inward instead of outward yeah both ways i guess okay i look i look inward but i i cannot also if you look at my works they're also very they're traditional in a way a lot of things are actually drawn and inspired by by our history by our culture but the materials that i use and some of the methods that i use are actually quite i would say um Non traditional, you know. I, I try to be as innovative. Uh, I use a lot of electronics, uh, mm -hmm. not not really the high tech stuff, but whatever is available there that can be incorporated, it can be, uh, you know, uh, simulated or used. I try and use that. So yeah. I have uh, transformers, motors, LED lights, and all of that. So these are like technical stuff that I try and incorporate in my art. And because I think we cannot also deny it, that's the whole idea. I think of of, of uh, that's that's what we can do with art, you know, is to to bring our past and to always carry 
that past with us and make it significant in the present. Yeah. I think that is very important. So the Bisaya, you know, no matter how folksy that is, I think if you can find a way to reiterate it and make it more significant in the present, so it doesn't get lost in the present, that it's still useful in the present, yeah. that it's still meaningful in the present. I think that's that's the most important thing. Mm. Talking about electronics a while ago, I was able to show our audience how your uh, lechon uh, installation works, you know, by using, by dropping a five peso coin. And this type of uh, habit is really uh, disappearing. There are no more of these automated uh, sing-along jukeboxes. Basically, it's the idea of the jukebox, diva. Right? Now you put in a coin. But there's karaoke and they use that. <laughs> I'm sorry. There's yeah. karaoke and yeah, they use that. I think it's 10 pesos now or 20 pesos per song. And then there's also, yeah, this is actually quite quite popular in the barrios. Even here in the city, there's a lot of that. It's just it's it's uh you know I, we have a karaoke box there beside us our neighbors and you know they're kind of like a nuisance but that's that's Filipino culture mm -hmm. uh, so and now you have those uh five peso automatic you know motor wash on the mm -hmm. side streets mm -hmm. so it's becoming uh, you know it's 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 really part of our our culture so it's actually becoming popular this particular like Electronic, yeah, the the, the, um, the coin slot. Uh, coin, yeah, slot the box, coin slot. Yeah, it's quite, actually quite popular. <laughs> Which you, we, I actually want to do more projects using that because it's funny. It's, it's funny. funny. Yeah, that's it's, true. It's interactive, but that's that's that's. I think it's very Filipino. And I think it's an ingenious uh, method ingenious, yeah. that uh, may have been lost, but actually it's very practical it is. for particular uh, activities. Yes. Um, and okay. though, you know, the, oh. those ATMs, automatic two big machines, they're like one peso coin slots, right? And you have oh. like this plastic, <laughs> plastic uh, ice candy wrappers that, they, that people actually use. I think a lot of it's it's very popular, but you know, I mean, uh, you can you can find that I think in, in the streets. So I mean, it's just a way of bringing that. You know, if you can bring that into it and make something creative out of it, uh, it's just my way of doing stuff too. There is another question here that I'd like to somehow segue from our discussion of the past and bringing it to past techniques or past knowledge to the present. How can we understand your work that uh, as far back as 2013 was talking about uh, community, your work more of uh, reclaimed wood entitled Palangay and uh, Habal Habal, there's also yeah. sculpture. And then here at Mugna, you've uh, unveiled three new artworks that are uh, abstract paintings, uh, wall works. Um, how can we relate your practice that seems very eclectic, but surely there is just one message undergoing all of your reiterations? Could you think, talk more about these recent works, the Liquid uh, Love series? Okay. I'm not so sure if I'm going to call it Liquid Love, but yeah, it's a play on, it's really a play on on uh, on material. Like I said, you know, I, I can't deny, I think, I think you, I, I, I think, uh, yeah, like what I said, you know, you can't deny, uh, even if we're we're um, like you know far behind in terms of technology with all the other countries, I think we cannot deny our modernity. And um, in this particular series, I've been I've used fiberglass and resin, and they're quite you know technical. They're 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 very process oriented. So they they would not be your traditional mediums of watercolor or and paint. They'd be polymers, you know, so dealing with the uh, hardeners and all the other technical stuff. So 
to me it's it's um, you know i mean there's a lot of abstraction going on uh, around the world you know and but like you know everything is always when you do art you do your own stuff you carry and you whatever it is that you have in you you know and, and that comes out that is reflected in your art and uh, to me that how i do my abstractions and how i play around with color or whatever material that i play with it's always in it's always you know like shaped by 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 my personality by how i've become now you know i mean and of course again uh, location where I am plays a very important role there. I picked up the word play, and I think perhaps this is what uh, connects all of your works. There is always some form of play, playing, being playful. And you know, if you notice those locations, they're not just in one particular space, it's not in one particular country. We can imagine that you've traveled very, very far, no? And uh, I guess we can understand this eclecticism by the fact that you like to absorb different mediums. You also like to uh, change looks, but there is always some level of lightness. Uh, you even play with the words, you know, you, one work is politics, the other one is polyquid, Poly and the other one is policy. <laughs> Even just the titles bring you to other, you know, connections that um, go beyond the visual, and uh, I think that's that's what is ingenious in your work. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, but uh, I think that's most of what uh, the audience would like to know. I think also this uh, virtual event has made them want to come to the gallery. I hope. I hope Everybody, they see the yeah. works. Yeah. Yes. And for those who are not in the Visayas, uh, hopefully there will be a chance to, for you anyway, to come to Dumaguete. And uh, don't worry, Babu's around. Okay. <laughs> He's everywhere. So, uh, uh, you know, you can always, I think, uh, get to see these works just because uh, Babu is a man around town. Yeah. Thanks, Babu, Thank you, for sir. a wonderful discussion. Thank you for your wonderful exhibition and more powers to uh, our collaborators and especially in the gallery. Thank yes. you. And Jana Humado. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Signing off. Take care. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you for visiting with us. The exhibition of Bobby Wets is now titled Asana Home. And if ever you're in Dumaguete, come to the municipality of Valencia and see the artworks for yourself. Have a good afternoon, everyone.